Hello and welcome to Book Break for Greece Public Library. I'm Kirstra, I'm one of the librarians here and I moderate our Pints and Prose book discussion group. And I am joined as always by my favorite reader, Claire. <laughs> Thank you, Kirstra. <laughs> Likewise, and I am Claire, a librarian here and I moderate as the page turns and also the historical group on Facebook. Excellent. And today we are doing a summer theme. We are bringing you beach reads, or um, as I like to call them, hammock reads, because I'm not as much of a beach person. But Me, me either. Not anymore. I, I'm yeah. more of a mountains person. So mm -hmm. yeah, mountain reads. Absolutely. But books you can take on vacation. You don't maybe have to spend quite so much brain power on as some yeah. of the other books we talk about. <laughs> Yeah. Um, do you want to kick us off, Claire? Oh, sure. I've got one I think is going to be one of the big beach reads of the summer. Mm. It's Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, mm -hmm. I have read some of her other books, Daisy Jones and the Six, mm -hmm. and I like her style of writing, even though she's a more entertaining, you know, read. It's more, and this one definitely didn't disappoint. It's very, I felt like I was reading a little bit of a scandal sheet, you know, okay. for a while, but it's set in Malibu in August of 1983. And even though it, like in the jacket cover, it says it covers like one night in the night of these famous siblings, it really gives you a lot of backstory into their mm -hmm. family and family history. And that's one of the things I really liked about it. So it's the day of the annual Riva summer ending party. Nina Riva has a big, beautiful house overlooking the cliffs on the beach at Malibu. Everybody wants to be invited. Her brother is a famous surfer. Um, she has another brother who's a photographer. And then um, her younger sister is, is also coming into her own as a surfer. Nina's a surfer, but she's more known as a model. And think, hmm. when I say model, think like, Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition type of model with people with posters of her all over their wall. Got it. Um, so the only person really not looking forward to the party is Nina herself. Um, she never wanted to be the center of attention. Uh, she's just been abandoned by her famous tennis player husband. And um, there are a lot of family secrets in this family. So they have a very famous singer father. So you learned how their parents met, you know, what happened to him when he left and pursued other people. And Nina has always been the one to pick up the pieces for her family. Um, so uh, it's a one forgettable, unforgettable night where everything comes to a head at this party and there's a big fire. I'm not gonna tell you much more but um, the actual party, party part to me was a little bit over the top. Well, more than a little bit, but um, it was still a good family story and a look into like the California 80s beach scene. Um, so yeah, Malibu nice. Rising. Very nice. Yeah, I haven't read any of her books, but Daisy Jones has been on my list for a while. Yeah. Nice. That one had a very Fleetwood Mac vibe to me. Mm, yeah. Okay, sure. Nice. All right. Um, well, my first one is Murder at the Brightwell by Ashley Weaver. Um, so this is a um, mystery set in the 1930s. Um, our main character is Amory Ames. She is um, a young wife to a very wealthy sort of playboy named Milo. Um, and at the beginning of the book, um, her ex-fiance Gil comes to see her to ask for her help because his sister has just gotten engaged to someone that he thinks is like entirely inappropriate. So he wants Amory to come with him and help convince his sister not to go through with this wedding um, or engagement even. So they um, trot off to the Brightwell, which is like a resort hotel, um, and hijinks ensue. Uh, people start turning up dead. Um, we find out Amory is um, 
rather estranged from her husband, even though they haven't been married for very long. Um, and then her husband shows up. So there's like love triangles and murders and all at this resort and um, in the 1930s. So it's got kind of uh, an Agatha Christie mm -hmm. vibe to it, which I really liked. Um, it's a page turner. It keeps things moving, um, but it never gets too heavy, uh, which is what I like in a hammock read. So nice. Very well. Yeah. All right. My next one. I'm actually taking one off of my pile of shame. Yay. So, the imposter syndrome by mm -hmm. Kathy Wang. Um, this one was the mother daughter read for my daughter and I, and it's not my typical jam because I consider it more of a spy type novel, but I know a lot of people okay. really like those. Um, mm -hmm. So it's also about women in the workplace, the power of big tech and the looming threat of foreign espionage. Um, so also set in California. So I've got two that are, are set in California. This is 2006, I believe it starts, Julia. Lerner is living in Moscow um, and then she's recruited by a Russian intelligence agency. So they groom her and then she gets in 2018, we flash forward and she is the C, the chief operating officer of a company called Tangerine. I was going to say grapefruit, <laughs> <laughs> um, which kind of is like a Facebook if you will, you know, it's a major social media platform. So this is quite the coup for them to have an inside person. And of course, they start asking more and more and more of her. Well, there's a, a lowly person that's been demoted. Her name is Alice, um, Alice Liu. And she decides to do a server check one night and then finds that there is activity on the server that looks really suspicious to her. And then she finds that someone is operating in God mode, which is what one of the founders <laughs> did. So it's a lot about privacy and mm -hmm. just different things happening with social media, but it's very fast paced. Um, and it's a cat and mouse game between the Soviets and what they do. And then how Julia, she marries a, an American doctor, has a baby, how her priorities change, and then what's going to happen to her, her family, um, hmm. which it's kind of a, a different ending. As a matter of fact, I messaged my daughter. She has an answer back going, I'm not really sure I got that. Like, <laughs> what, what happened at the end, you know? Um, so, yeah, it, it's, a, it's very fast paced and it's kind of, you know, an exciting kind of spy read if you like those. Oh, that sounds really good. I haven't had a good spy book in a long time. Yeah. And the other thing that was interesting to me is the animosity towards her on both sides because she's mm. a woman. I found it so infuriating, but I could easily see that it's so true that, mm -hmm. you know, it seems like successful women are targeted a lot more than a man in that position. So she's also grappling with that, mm -hmm. you know, um, having to come back from her maternity leave earlier because, you know, it's like a lot of the women in the company are like a bunch of vipers too. It's like everybody wants to replace you on both mm -hmm. sides, like her, her supposed position and her spy position. You know, they send mm -hmm. in another guy from uh, Moscow or Berlin that she doesn't trust. So yeah, it's a, it's a lot going on. Hmm. Yeah. That sounds really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, nice. Um, my next one is an older title, um, but one that I really like and I think would be like perfect vacation read, which is Where'd You Go oh. from the Debt by Maria yeah. Semple. So if there's anyone out there who has not read this book yet, um, which I'm realizing might not be that many of you, um, pick up a copy. It's so good. So um, it is set relatively in the present day in Seattle. Um, our main character is B. She is a very, very bright young lady um, in like late middle school, I think. Um, and her parents, her father is um, a computer engineer at Microsoft, like a very high level guy. 
um, and her mom, Bernadette, um, right now doesn't really work, but she used to be an architect. Um, and they live in this like giant rambling house that used to be like a girl's school, I think. Um, and it's gonna be very hard to capture sort of the tone of this book. Um, it's hilarious and heartwarming. Um, the setup is that uh, B's parents have promised her that if she does well in school, she can have a trip anywhere she wants. She picks Antarctica. Um, and I left my own heart. Yeah. Right. Um, and her mother, who has turned into a little bit of an agoraphobe, is like kind of on edge about the trip and she disappears. Um, and so a lot of the book is kind of trying to go back and figure out what happened, where she went, <laughs> and why she left. Um, so I don't want to spoil any of that part, um, but part of the book, um, there are like emails in the book and text chains that are giving you backstory. Um, there is sort of a skewering of like uh, private school parent culture in there, um, as well as like the Microsoft corporate culture. Um, but we get you start with sort of what you think is a fairly clear cut. This is what happened and this is who these people are. And you just get layers and layers and layers of complexity. And she, the author really fleshes these people out from caricatures into full three-dimensional people. Um, and I think, you know, they all have good and bad, nobody is just one thing, you end up with a lot of sympathy for folks that at the beginning you might not have had any sympathy for, or at least I did. Um, so there's family drama, there's secrets, there's comedy, there's some really truly hilarious passages in this book. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's heartwarming, it's funny, uh, bits of it are a little sad, but then come right back to sort of heartwarming and funny. So just a great light, but light, but still with a little bit of substance vacation read. Yeah, I agree. That would even make a good reread if you haven't read it in a long time. I think so. Um, yeah. There is a movie and I didn't think the movie was that great. They made some choices that I didn't agree with that I thought kind of changed the character of the book but yeah I don't even think I watched the movie so yeah you're not missing much yeah, yeah. <laughs> my last one is like a thriller mystery mm -hmm. by an author that's pretty popular Lisa Jewell it's called I found you um, the reason why I talked about this one is because we start um, on a beach in off the coast of England I think it's East Yorkshire uh, a 41-year-old single mother of three, Alice Lake, finds a man with amnesia on her beach. Um, it's pouring rain. He has no coat. He has no identification on him. He has no idea what he's doing there. And of course, she decides to take him home to, you know, care for him, let him sleep in her shed. You know, well, of course, Claire. What else yeah, would you do why, with a stranger? Why not? You know, <sighs> of course, paranoid Claire would be like, call the police, you know, but... It's a good thing I'm not starring in these books because there wouldn't be any. They'd be um, very different books. <laughs> yes, they would. So against your better judgment, you know, she sets up this relationship. Um, my implausibility meter was, you know, right off the charts. And I almost threw the book down in disgust. But I thought, no, people have said this is a good book. I've read other books by her. Um, so I kept going and come to find out there's a second mystery um, where there's a it's set like in the 90s and hmm. you meet this family that vacations also in a small beach town. Um, and there's a brother and sister and he is worried because there's this kind of 19 year old young man who he can instantly sense something is wrong, who hmm. is following his younger sister around and he knows is worming his way into their family. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have that. And then we have a third mystery 
which is a young Ukrainian woman. Um, also, this one's also in modern day, like Alice. And she's only been married a few weeks. She doesn't know anyone in the country. And her husband has not returned home from work. And she knows something is wrong because he just would not leave her in the country. They were madly in love, blah, blah, blah. Um, so she has to wait. Finally, the police take her case because there's a certain amount of time before missing mm -hmm. person adult can be filed. Um, she gives them his passport and pictures. And then they tell her that the man she thinks is her husband doesn't exist. So, um, uh, and of course, all three of these things intertwine at mm -hmm. the end. And it was a satisfying conclusion. You know, I, I was glad I kept going. Alice, you know, spoiler alert, but you know, none of Alice's children are harmed despite hey. her, you know, reckless behavior. But um, yeah, so there we have it. I, I have a, a mystery, a spy, and a kind of, mod, you know, historical mm -hmm. suspense set on the beach, so. Very nice. Um, my last book is also a thriller because there really is nothing I like better on a beach or a hammock than a thriller. Um, and this one has also been out for a little while, but I really liked it. It is Something in the Water by Katherine Stedman. I almost talked about that one Did too. You? Yeah. That would have been very funny. Yeah. Um, so I just have to read you the first sentence of this book, uh, which is, have you ever wondered how long it takes to dig a grave? So that lets you know that things are like bonkers from the beginning. It's like, the crazy is at like a 10 from page one. Right. And it never goes, like it never gets less. Um, so our main character is Erin. She's a documentary filmmaker. Um, at the beginning of the book, she is about to get married to her fiance, Mark, who is in finance. And they have um, planned their dream honeymoon to Bora Bora. Um, and kind of almost from the very beginning, there are some things that are starting to go wrong. I don't want to give away really any details of this book because I think it would spoil all of the twists and turns. Um, but they go on their honeymoon and something happens on their honeymoon that kind of sets up the rest of the book. So um, that first sentence is, um, you know, we start in the present day and then there's flashbacks to the wedding and the honeymoon kind of bringing you up to try to figure out why she's digging a grave on the first page of the book. Yeah. Um, so it is like the page turner book um, because something crazy is happening like every other page. Um, I would not scrutinize it too closely because I feel like you're probably gonna find some holes if you go looking, but this is like the equivalent of um, like a summer blockbuster movie. Right. In some ways, like, don't think about it too much. Just sit back. Just keep and, turning like, the pages. Yes. And enjoy <laughs> the crazy that is happening in front of you. Um, it was so entertaining. And I really didn't have any idea where it was going. It did keep me guessing. It wasn't one of those where I'm like, well, clearly this is what happened. And this is how you get from A to B. Let's let's see how you get there. No, no. You don't know where this is going. Where no, do you think it's going? It's crazy. <laughs> yes. Totally bonkers, um, but hugely entertaining and enjoyable. So Good. Yeah. Well, hopefully um, we've got something that you would like to read in your hammock, beach, or poolside. So indeed, let us know. Yeah, I did try to pick a few that were kind of slightly different in tone, though still in keeping with like hammock cocktail book kind of a philosophy. Got it. Yeah. Um, so please do tell us if you've read any of these, um, what your favorite beach reads are, if there are any books you're looking forward to taking with you on vacation this year. Um, we're always looking for suggestions. Um, yeah. So let us know what you think. Have a All good right. summer. 
Yes, absolutely. And just a reminder, this is our only book break for July um, because Claire and I are both taking a little bit of a step back for the summer. Um, so we will see you in early August. Um, but until then, enjoy your books, enjoy the summer, um, and we will see you in about a month. <laughs>